So we're gonna like. Hi Anurag. Hey. Hey. Hello everyone. Welcome to a brand new show, a podcast, or you can call it Chai Pe Chacha. In this series, we're gonna cover up most of our teams, how we work in an advertising world, basically how we think, plan, and execute. Uh, we are changing three. Ek a C T, ek a creativity plus technology. Without any further ado, let's quickly jump into C T Talks episode one not one called the design. My name is Mohammad Ami Yusuf Khan, and I am an associate creative director. Today on C T Talks, we have Anirudh, who's our national creative director. Thank you. Welcome to C T Talks, Anirudh. Thank you. Thanks. So tell us something about you. Um, so I've been doing this for I think about twelve years now. I started. With um, I studied design in Srishti School of Art Design and Technology yes. here in Bangalore, and um, from there I quickly moved into with my first job into the advertising uh, world and uh, started working towards design, figuring out how design works in advertising, and you know starting from your um, things like banners, things like ads, digital ads, and I've always been kind of interested in digital advertising in social media. And so, yeah, so fast forward to kind of now and then no. here we are. That's crazy. So on this uh, episode called The Design, so we, uh, how, how do CT approach design, basically? So um, I think when it comes to design process at Changing Tree, what we try to look at is uh, we put the brand or the client first. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, what is their story? What is it that, uh, what is the problem? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it they're coming with and what, where can we provide the solution? So a lot of it, the way that I deal with when a new brief comes in, for example, uh, the first few set of questions that we ask are more about the brand, are Correct. more about who are we talking to, yeah. right? And what is their background? What is the history? What is their story? Because that storytelling is very important when it comes to what are you going to then, you know, portray to the world. Correct. So from there we go into kind of cracking the brief, um, figuring out, okay, what are the questions that we have? And then moving forward, we'll get into developing the content, developing design, uh, developing whatever it is that the brand needs and during this process of course there's a lot of back and forth and talking with the client right. and seeing that we're in the right direction and when it comes to the teams uh, again it is a lot to do with put yourself in the brand's shoe right Correct. because uh, a lot of the times the kind of brands that we work with um, we are also consumers of those brands so we are the ones who are going to be seeing what we do or people of similar, similar age groups. Age groups yeah. So it's important to kind of lead with that and lead with, you know, basically being a little more empathetic towards what you're trying to do, uh, who you're trying to speak to, uh, what kind of story you're trying to tell. And by and large, that's what we try to aim for when it comes to the process. Um, and of course, it changes from client to client. Yeah, okay. around depending on what the brief is, lots of times what the timeline is. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to fast track that. But yeah, that's pretty much. Is it uh, a hurdle for you when you fast track something? Uh, I think you kind of pick and choose sometimes. Like, you know, there are, there, are, there are times where you have the luxury of spending a lot of time on research. Yeah, okay. uh, but sometimes you don't. And sometimes the, it's you can spend a lot of time, let's say, planning something, you go from thumbnail stage, you go to uh, sort of a rough sketch, you go into then executing it and then finalizing the design. But a lot of the times all this has to be scrunched up into let's say two days. Two days, yeah. So when I say you pick and choose, you basically try to see, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to focus on things that are more important and that's why we always go back to what the brief is, yeah. what is the ask. And a lot of the times if you've decoded the brief properly, then you will not face challenges yes. with respect to timeline. Okay. Because you're, you're able to compartmentalize everything and work backwards from the deadline, yeah. So as a whole, you've spoken about the process. Uh, I want to understand where does the design team fit into this process? So um, ideally what we try to do is we try to 
get the design team involved or let's say one designer involved from the get-go. Uh, the moment the brief comes in, uh, we try to make sure that that person is also in those meetings. Is, so because a lot of the times things might get kind of you know lost in translation and all that might happen. So it's always a safer bet to involve the design team from the start. From the start. Um, and I think what that helps them do also is understand the story the same way that anybody else in that meeting would. And uh, then it is everybody's creativity and everybody's way of thinking that they will be able to decode that brief. So, so on the one hand, they will start off from the start, right? Correct. They'll get the brief and everything, and then, so that it's a parallel process. So then the design team will also parallelly keep working, keep working on their own ideas. Yeah, and there is always like you know going forward, there's always a path that com will converge Correct. with the copywriting yeah. team with everybody else, and then we see how we can mold these ideas and uh, okay. come up with whatever is best for the brand. So that's what usually we do. Nice. I want to understand, like, if a new joinee wants to enter this, you know, uh, industry, how, how, what, what matters, experience or skill? Uh, I think I would say that for somebody who's joining new, I mean, they're already kind of, you know, they've already kind of lost the bet on experience because they're uh, uh, fresher. I mean, but fresher. there's a lot of ways to sort of overcome that because uh, the general complaint that I've heard is that. Okay, people always want somebody with, I'm a fresher, but people want with two years experience Correct. or three years experience. But I feel like that's where your skill matters as a, as a fresher. Yes. Because um, a lot of the times you will bring to the table something that, let's say, this a so-called agency will not have. Um, and uh, you bringing that to the table is your strength. Then. Yeah. So for somebody who is freshly into the industry um, obviously skill matters um, and if they have let's say a lot of the times they will have like how I would go about it also is I would look at whatever projects they have when they are applying now those could be college projects those could be personal projects whatever it is but a few things that we try to look at is is their motivation is their proactiveness Correct. right um, skills you will be able to see through let's say what kind of presentation skills that they've put in into because on a portfolio website you can do the basic uploading images but yeah. you can also curate it nicely so with things like Behance and stuff especially so when we try to you know look at somebody who's joining new we try to look at these things that are they proactive enough are they somebody who will be able to uh, use their skill, skill even if they don't have experience but right. use their skill as their strength and not fall behind yeah so coming back to i mean your initial question i think for a fresher skill matters, skill matters yeah uh which what do you think like the new journey should have like the softwares he should know the tool set he should know to enter this industry see i think um i i my personal feeling is that you don't have to be perfect at one thing Correct. Like you, there will obviously be people who will be looking for that, uh, and you might find your place in that kind of an agency. But I feel like if you are a jack of all trades, also that kind of obviously that matters because you have a working knowledge of things, and then the rest of it you apply and you learn as you go along. Correct. Right, but. Um, in terms of software specifically, I feel like obviously the regular Adobe software and stuff is there. Um, if what we look at is if you have um, an additional set of skills like let's say you know After Effects, you know Premiere Pro, maybe you know Cinema 4D or some kind of Blender or 3D modeling, then obviously that becomes a plus. Plus point. 100%, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so it really depends on. I, I feel like. As long as you have a working knowledge of uh, things that would apply to social media, because it's also an ever-evolving uh, field, right? It's also, and with design itself, you can see that every day something is new is coming, something is changing. You can see trends, you can see all of those things. So, so I think to have that little bit of, let's say, skills in different software 
is something that would probably be to your advantage as opposed to maybe being really really good at only one thing one. because then you kind of narrow it down narrow for yourself down. yeah you can't do anything that's very important that's true now as a designer i'm also a designer so as a designer sometimes i get into you know mind blocks hmm. how do you overcome mind blocks in your situation i think um, it's it's a mind block is like i feel like it's a very personal thing when it comes to because it could be triggered by a number of things yes, right correct. um how your day has gone uh, maybe you got bad feedback maybe yeah. you got uh, uh maybe you're struggling with just coming up with an idea it could be anything but i feel like when it comes to um, mind block i think the one thing that i found useful is you just walk away from it and by that i mean is that yeah, let's say you could be yeah you could, yeah, you could be struggling with something uh trying to come up with an idea trying to come up with a design uh maybe doing a creative in some way or the other you even if it's like a social media post or it could be a website yeah. but you might find that okay i'm not being able to move forward so i feel like first thing to do is to kind of walk away another thing i feel like that helps is show what you've done to somebody else who is in no of, way related to correct. the work right uh, their perspective so. yeah because when you have that outside opinion you it will force you also to look at it differently differently 100% from yeah. that person's correct. perspective, perspective right yeah. um and i think what also helps is in this same sort of wavelength to uh, when you walk away maybe go have some tea coffee yeah. whatever you like and take a break speak to people okay. speak to people about what you're doing speak to people about why you're struggling or what yeah. you're struggling with and a lot of the times it could be either them solving that for you or it could be them just distracting you from it either way it helps it helps yeah i know right? it helps. and um, because you're able to detach yeah. from it so i think that's one way to kind of at least for me to come up i think uh, even i do the same thing like change yeah. the topic yeah exactly for a while just change the topic yeah. and then you get back to it then you have fresh idea you have yeah exactly correct so anirudh how do you motivate your team that's very important like yeah so i think like how i was speaking about the mind block thing as well um, i think what we try to do is uh, one of the things to kind of keep harnessing your creativity is to do something slightly like in the creative zone but slightly different from what your regular day to day work is so like for example what i do with the team is uh, something we call a creative session and a knowledge session so we do this every wednesdays and fridays where uh, we'll gather as a team in the morning before work starts and uh, for our knowledge session one person will share some kind of knowledge with the rest of the team Correct. so it could be a hack that they learned in illustrator for example or photoshop it could be something like okay how do i get over negative feedback so each person comes up with their own thing things and then they basically share that knowledge with the rest of the team and then what we do on a friday is we do the creative session which is basically creative exercises so again one by one everybody will come up with one exercise for the team so i think some of the things that we've done before like what we have uh, even in fact posted on our social media also on changing tree is we had done using design trends we had done some movie posters or for example let's say we'll go something which is a little bit further away from uh, working on a laptop we'll work on paper so we'll say that okay maybe just you know spend half an hour uh drawing each other's portraits but without looking at the paper and and so these are just like you know sort of offbeat kind of exercises that keep you engaged, engaged that yeah. keep you kind of um creatively involved yeah and upscale your skill set as well yeah and it doesn't it doesn't really like go too further away from your regular work and then you yourself feel that sense of freshness and that sense of motivation yeah, yeah 100% uh so these are some of the things that we do 
uh, that's, to, that's a to get that, way, you know. Yeah, that's uh, a beautiful way to motivate a team because obviously in our field, I think we have to gain knowledge as much as possible and we have to upscale our skill set by the new trends and stuff. Yeah. That's correct. amazing. And in this process, like now we've spoken about motivation and everything. I want to understand like how do you strategize a brand? 